Welcome to the Quick Stop of F1 podcast. My name is Nyasha and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. Joining me as ever is my very well behaved and very not dancing all over the screen host, Tandy Savanda. You're great. You've really subdued yourself. I like it. I had to put myself in like a straight jacket so I didn't yeah. do that. A little dance even though i feel like you're the only one who's asked about me dancing like everybody else just loves it if you could show me someone who loves it i will tell you i will stop I will show you, you someone yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. someone okay someone who's not thirsty so right. <laughs> so uh how did you find the race first and foremost did you so, i ended up watching it today while i was ironing yeah nice. i iron now okay cool and I thought, I can't lie to you, I thought it was extremely depressing. Yeah, not great. I can't not lie great. to you guys, like, yeah. Yeah. That did not bring a smile to my face. Look, it didn't no, bring no. a smile to her face. And you know what? When I asked our guests to come on, right? Mm-hmm. I thought, I was like, these guys are doing so well that mm-hmm. when this guy comes on, it's going to be like a uh like it's gonna be like a victory podcast for me he's gonna be able to come on and he's gonna be able to tell us all about how well yeah ferrari done at imola and right. actually it might have turned out to be it was more pain than mercedes but it doesn't matter because i'm really happy to say that we've got my favorite ferrari fan vincenzo landino all the way from South Palm, South Beach, Florida, right? South Florida, South Florida. I'm in Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Uh, Palm, Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Yeah. No, man, look, thank you for coming on. How are you? Fantastic. I'm with you, Ed. Was that, was that a Jay-Z reference in the beginning? You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. Yes, oh. it was. Okay. Someone gets oh, it. Somebody gets it. Someone gets it. I was, it's like, only taking like, like, six episodes. <laughs> Like where have I heard that before? <laughs> is a v- yep okay. Um, Amazing episodes! Oh my god! We like you, we like you, we like you already, like you. Already. I love song. Anyone? I love song lyrics, lyrics, and I like references to song lyrics. So that was like, I heard that before. Yeah. No, if no. anyone doesn't actually know, me and Yasha are like Jay Z stan accounts, like yeah. connoisseurs. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> nothing I, wrong with that. No, look, look, Vincenzo. One day on Twitter, I said that I'd take dinner with jay-z over 20 grand and it was the biggest flogging i've ever got <laughs> but i stand by it i stand by it i just i just want to meet him okay i want to meet him and i'll he's I, a business man he's a business yeah, yeah. Would, why not i'm gonna handle my business damn <laughs> do you know what i mean oh, <laughs> oh. And look we could do this all day but um what i wanted to talk to you about vincenzo yeah um a couple of things one so i guess like I don't want to assume anything about you. So what's like your, what's your connection to Ferrari and Italy, I guess, is is what I would, because I, I know we've had little chats on Twitter about yeah. pasta and Ferrari and like, I, I know that you're Italian, but I guess it'd be cool to, for you to like, I guess, describe that for us and how that relates to, you're the first, I think you're the first, is it Tifoso? Yes. Tifosi yes. is, is the plural. Yeah. But, I, you, but, the way you rolled your eyes there, yeah. now I'm like, I wish I hadn't bothered saying that. No, no, you're okay. You're okay. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm, okay, good. Tifoso, like, Tifoso, Tifosa, it's fan, right? Oh, a fan, okay. typically. And then Tifosi is fans. Oh. But uh, Ferrari, you know, like, they've got this, like, the, their army of fans is yeah. just called, they've been labeled the Tifosi. Oh. And that's, so that's why people are like, I'm a Tifosi, which is fine too. You know, I'm one of the fans. Yeah. Again, it all comes down to it's literally the word for typhus. Tifo oh. is the word for typhus. Typhus is a sickness where fever, <laughs> you know, like high fever. Yeah, yeah. And so, what do you, you know, when you're a fan of something, you're fevered, you are like over the top when you're that's how ferrari fans are right or any <laughs> yeah. fan of any of any team we all are, to be fair <laughs> whether it's football yeah. or or american football or or you know f1 you are fevered when you're a fan and so anyway that's the word for it but uh yes people so um me i mean i grew up i grew up watching 
them. Uh, well, I had an uncle who I have an uncle who is uh, loves motorsport, loves Formula One. We used to go to races uh, all the time, not Formula One races, but any races we could get, we could go to. Uh, I grew up in Connecticut outside okay. of New York. Yeah. Uh, first generation Italian American. My parents, you know, moved from Italy, and I just it just runs in your. It's kind of part of your DNA. It's part of that, you know, when when you watch a race like Imola or when you watch a Monza, and you see all the tifosi just going absolutely crazy. I mean, that's how we feel about our team, which yeah. is not different than other other fans right but it is a little bit different right because i don't think any other team i don't think it does i don't think any other team has that national connection and pride right Right. that that. ferrari does so yeah italians are far more far more passionate in general right that's yeah i'm not i'm not telling i'm not telling brits (laughs) anything different they don't know i have a lot of british friends oh look (laughs) The way I, we communicate is very different. No, I just quite well, lo- because yeah. like you could be British, but you won't be loyal to Lewis Hamilton, as we all know. Yeah, but yeah, I feel yeah. like with the Ferrari fans and you're Italian, it's like a rite of yeah. passage. It's something that you just do as you grow up. Like it's natural to I, you guys. Yeah. I think. And people ask, like, oh, are, are you a Leclerc fan? Are you a science fan? No, I'm I'm truly a Ferrari fan. I don't I don't care who's sitting in those seats. If it was Verstappen, if it was Hamilton in those seats, I would, you know, okay. it's the brand, it's the, it's the mark when you see the prancing horse like that uh, brings up a lot of passion and pride for, for us, you know, whether you're walking down the street here in South Florida or whether you're in London or whether you're in, in, in the streets of Italy and you yeah. see uh, one go by, it's just like, oh, you, you smile, right? And I've said this on another podcast too, where someone asked me a similar question and it's like, yeah, I mean, that passion where the company started, it was formed out of that passion for racing. So it, to me, it's for, you know, for formula one is synonymous with Ferrari. And, and unfortunately, like they haven't been good over the last decade or so. And that's okay. Right. We all ups and downs, but they've been there forever. And it's, it's so synonymous with the sport. Somebody actually asked me the question that do I feel I was on a podcast made a couple weeks ago and someone asked if I felt that the payments they receive for being (laughs) part of the sport the longest were, were justified. And I said, you know what I do. And that's like, if I step back and I really think about it, I do because they, if you talk to anybody who knows nothing about formula one, and you say Ferrari, they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, the fast cars, red. Yeah, of course. Like they could, there's yeah. so much more they know yeah. about that brand than anything else. Yeah. You know, Red Bull, oh, well, that's an energy drink. <laughs> well, look. Uh, well, Alpine, what's Alpine? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's just, yeah, anyway. It, it is, look, we can, I, I, you know, as much as, where I'm a Hamilton fan first and foremost, and then I, by, wait, by wait, def- wait. Whoa. You're Hamilton? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know, but I really like Lewis Hamilton. I'm a really? uh, yeah, big fan. Big fucking fan. Um so for me, um I get it because I I like Lewis first and foremost, and you know, after that I do like Mercedes, but there's that that's that connection, but that connection that I have with Lewis, and I think the connection a lot of people have with Lewis is a, a lot different to the connection that people have with Ferrari and Ferrari have mm-hmm. been there since Lewis has been there for what 15 years Ferrari have been there for what 50 plus now so you know it, it really it doesn't compare as a brand we all know what Ferrari are and what they bring to the table so and they're truly global that's you know that's, yeah. that's the, the the brand itself is truly global and it's it I would argue that it's bigger in other parts of the world uh, yeah. like in Asia you know uh, Singapore uh, the Middle East, yeah. Actually, here and right here in Palm Beach, yeah. One of the largest, if not the largest, Ferrari like gathering happens here. Oh, that's so nice. It, it's you know, I, I would say it it goes above a lot of. Um, it transcends is the word I was looking for. A lot of yeah. just racing or just you know a lot of money because it's just the amount of passion. Most owners of the cars are so passionate about them. It's not like 
you just buy one and, and you have it. It's yeah. you, you're buying it for a reason. Like there's yeah. anyway, I don't want to talk. No, no, that's fine. Right. Trust me. Let's talk about some what, racing. Once, once, what, look, once we get a bit of YouTube money, when I buy my Ferrari, I'm going to be like, Hey, our friend, Tommy, he's got a lot of, he's got a couple of nice cars. I'm going to be like my guy. That Ferrari is going to be all over my Instagram. Don't you worry. I'm going to exactly. be all, like, all the Ferrari meets. I can't wait. <laughs> but um, look, we're here to talk about the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Um, yep. And let's. Yeah. <laughs> this is some real sad boy hour shit right yeah. now. <laughs> Very much giving less Emily, yeah, and Mel, Emily, yeah. Oh wow! Did you did you practice? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it! I love it! I love it! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah. we, we um, let's talk about. I guess um. Uh, you know, it sounds a bit weird, but I just want to get straight into, I guess, the result of the race, right? Because yeah. it, it's a big thing, I guess. Ferrari this season, uh, you know, a lot of times people say, look, we're Mercedes fans. I have heard my team principal say we're sacrificing a season to be better in the future. And you like take them... You take them for their word, and then their car is twerking up and down pit straights. That's not the point. We'll discuss that later. But Ferrari and Bernardo have been very clear since, well, I guess, 2020. They've been very clear. We're focusing on next year. Then COVID happens, and obviously, I guess it gives everyone an extra year to, to sort out what they're going to do for 2022. But they've actually delivered, right? It, it would seem the most... Maybe. Maybe. Well, I guess it is a stark improvement from last year and it's a stark improvement from 2020. And, For sure. and you have a driver in Charles Leclerc who is capable of fighting for race wins and competing for race wins. I think you have another one as well, but who is, we can discuss Carlos in a second. Yeah. One thing we've always said about Charles Leclerc is that he has the bozo gene in him and it would seem that whether it's inexperience whether it's over exuberance whether it's whatever it is there is a mistake in charles leclerc this mistake felt probably the worst that he's done i guess in your eyes <sighs> What's your assessment of Charles Leclerc's, like, uh, you know, and I, I, I'm sorry to go in, but I guess I just want to, because I, I think it's, a, I, I think, it, I think there's a discussion to be had around Charles, because I personally, I'm really upset. There was a podcast that we did before the season started, where we ranked the drivers underneath uh, Verstappen and Lewis, and there was like six drivers, and I was insistent on putting Charles first. And I got well, a lot at the same time. I got a lot of pushback on that. That got... episode was possibly one of our most rudest and controversial. Oh, and okay. Look, for sure. The world said it can't come out. Yeah, look. We lost it. We lost, we lost it. Yeah. Some of some of some of some of know some of the brand endorsements we've got now would not have happened if we if that episode had come out. If that had but, come out. But yeah. uh I, I really like Charles Scott. I think he's great. But also, I do think he's got a mistake in him. As a Ferrari fan, and obviously he is, you know, he, the uh, the golden child of Ferrari, the future of Ferrari. Yeah. What's your assessment, I guess, of 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 Charles Leclerc's, I want to say weekend, but I guess that incident in particular. I'm sorry to bring it up so soon. <laughs> no, I, I, I listen, I, I, I'm a fan of the sport, and I've been yeah. watching it long enough to to know that stuff happens it's okay uh i was very adamant the minute i saw what was going I, I looked at my wife and i said they really should not try to push for a second at this point i think there was 10 laps to go when he yeah. when he tried to when he pitted for for softs i said they're gonna go for softs well obviously we saw it on the, on the broadcast yeah and i shook my head immediately not that i know anything not that i you know of like, course of but course. i said i said they, they really shouldn't do this because he's gonna fight for this extra point 
which I know is very valuable in the in the the rate in you know the the overall world championship. Mm-hmm. He's gonna fight for a point, but knowing him, he's gonna really push for second, which he was he got close. Yeah. But I'm like, he's gonna he's really gonna push for second, and you know to gain th- th- how I looked at it was this. Let's just say he did gain fastest lap and he did get second. That's a total gain of four points, but he ended up losing seven potential yeah. points. Yeah. So for me, uh, a minus three on the net scale isn't worth it. Like it's yeah. not enough. Now one could argue, and I did have this argument with someone else. Well, three points in the grand scheme of things at the end of the season, four points at the end of the season, that that could be a, the differentiator. Yeah, maybe. But losing seven points, and I mean, he got very lucky that he saved that. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. He didn't save that. That's fifteen points off the board, or twelve points off the board, whatever. Yeah. Com- completely, plus nothing from Carlos for a second week in a row. Now the const- now the constructor actually Red Bull, I think, would have leaped them in the constructors. Yeah. So that and not and again, very very early, right? There's for not sure. freaking out, but when I for me, I I sit there and say that's a very typical. That's a very typical thing, right? For yeah. the team that I've been watching for the past ten years, that's what was infor- unfortunate for me. And knowing that Charles is a very good driver, I, I, I would rank him right up there behind Max. Yeah, um, behind Lewis, just just beneath them, right? I think he's that fast. I think he's that good. He just still, like you said, he's kind of got that bozo gene, you know. The first thing I thought of, I am stupid. I am stupid. Was the first thing I thought of. And watching him bite that curb hard to try to to get an extra advantage at a point where you you're third. It, yeah. Just take the third, take the podium. Yeah. Don't don't give the for me the worst thing to do was give not only give Red Bull blood like that blood in the water mentality. Yeah. Oh, you know what we've got them. Or now now kind of seeing that. You are. I go back to uh, what, what was it? Uh, you, you guys, remember, did you watch Iron Man two? I did, yeah. I okay, remember so in Iron, Iron Man two, when Whiplash <laughs> on on the Monaco on the Monaco, remember, circuit, right? guess it, yeah, yeah, it sounds. And he and he fights Iron Man, and then and then Tony Stark ends up talking to him and saying like, "But you didn't beat me or whatever." And he goes, "Yeah, but if you could make God bleed." Yeah. That's that's what matters, right? Now yeah. I'm not saying that Ferrari is God, but I'm saying like <laughs> if you could see a weakness, hey. it makes everyone else realize, okay, there we've got a better shot. Now you've given McLaren hopes because now Lando's got a little bit of yeah. oh look at this. I, I can finish third because yeah. they can make a mistake. We can we can force Leclerc into mistake. Like that's now the mentality of the other team. We can force him into a mistake. We know that Red Bull is going to prioritize Verstappen at all costs. Yeah, all costs. They hmm. so you know what? Now they're going to use Sergio to force, yeah, just con- force Leclerc into mistakes. So I I feel like it just it gave so much more ammunition for other teams to see them do that. They lost points where they didn't have to. He got very very lucky to even save that. Yeah, you know it. So yes, is he a good driver? I do. I think that there, there's still something missing. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's killer instinct. I think it's the ability. Max has a really good ability to block out a lot of noise, where he doesn't care really about anything, especially yeah. when he's racing. I think so. I've seen Tandy say. The thing I have always known about Charles is that he's a young driver. Yeah. And at the same time, he's a gamer. So I've always said that recklessness of him comes from just being able to restart. He doesn't, he's not so, he's a gamer in the sense that when you're gaming, and per, I don't know if you've ever played Formula One on <laughs> console, but like there's this ability to just kind of be reckless. Yeah. Without yeah. actually there being any consequences because you're gaming. So I have always Which had that. Which is the same thing. thing. Yeah. And yeah, I think so, Lando kind of has Lando has that same mentality too. Yes, I always say this. So there's this idea that like there's no consequences, and so they mm-hmm. kind of just go for it. And they're stupid mistakes. They're absolute stupid mistakes. But in their heads, yeah. it's like 
a rite of passage in a way like mm -hmm. let's just see how it how the outcome comes out yeah. and with per se lewis carlos sometimes and the older drivers there is that sense of thinking should i do that let me just allow it let me let me let me settle for the position that i'm at and just accept that this is my position but the lads the younger ones they're just you know but i'll also say that, you know, i i would say this too and not not to be cliche but to quote my favorite driver of all time aaron senna uh you know if you're not going for a gap you're not a racer anymore and so i'm not saying that was a gap he was going for but that mentality of you're always pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, trying to get it. You know, we saw it, we saw it in, was it Australia where, where if you wanted to yeah. go for the fastest lap and you're like, you already have it. Like, you don't, that's that killer instinct. I wish he, he would show all the time. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. have that killer instinct. But for but, a long term also, goal. Correct. Go ahead. No, no, I was saying have the killer instinct, but have it for the world championship, not for right. that particular moment in time. Like you're yeah. you're in a world championship fight. It's time for you to collect points rather than I guess, you know, just collect point. Yeah. You're forty points ahead of the next closest driver. That's yeah. that's a hefty lead. Big lead. Hefty. Yeah. You just need to collect points. Now, you still want to win, but on races where you're clearly not going to win just collect he was racing he wasn't even racing he was yeah. driving around the circuit by himself that's yeah. what bothered me the most it wasn't that you there was really anybody around him that forced him into an error that's completely a mental error at yeah. least with carlos he got pushed off there was nothing he could have done once he spun it into that gravel nothing yeah. yeah okay sure he could have cut maybe come to the inside there was some of those types but there was nothing he could have done once he got pushed charles it's like it's these these unforced errors, so to speak. We, you know, yeah. we saw in Monaco last year, Baku, uh, Baku. We see it now. Yeah, we saw. It, I mean, it happened in 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 uh, yeah. qualifying. Was it qualifying or practice? No, practice, qualifying. practice in. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, qualifying Baku as well. Yeah. So, you know, those are the things that bother you. And and again, I don't I don't like to give Max all so much credit, but <laughs> no, I think trust me, no one here does. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> I don't take any sides in all of these things because I like I try to be as neutral as possible. Of course. But I will say what's impressed me about Max is that hit two DNFs. It was very easy for him to go off the rails, be very upset. Yeah. But he finished first in the other two races, which of course Sky let us know that's what happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh they're gonna do that. <laughs> but but it what's impressive about that is that he's got a very short uh, memory. Yeah. So it's Okay, you know what? It is what it is. I'm going to go and make sure that we get the we maximize what we do on races where we can finish, you know, where we do finish. And that's what I wish, uh, you know, Leclerc or or I, I'm going to say signs as well, but just that Ferrari mentality is okay. You know what? We messed up. Not, like it's going to be very to me. It'll be very crucial to see what happens in Miami, yeah, and then and then Monaco, which we know. <laughs> <laughs> Of a course, lot of boogie. A lot no, of it is a boogie race, um, and it's, there's gonna be a lot of pressure on Charles. Um, a lot of pressure on Carlos because now he's got two DNFs mm -hmm. in a row mm -hmm. in a car which he should have been in the best car of the weekend because yeah. they gave him an upgrade. He had the 15 horsepower upgrade engine. Uh, uh, yeah, I see. So it it's, it's, yeah. it's, it can go okay. very wrong very quickly. Yeah, that's the thing about Carlos right now. It could either turn one way or the other way very quickly. It could very, turn very into yeah. uh, a series of mis unfortunate events for Carlos, just, you know, just minor blips, or it could just really turn into a real fraud watch real oh, yeah. quick. And they're gunning for it. They're gunning for it. As we know, Red Bull uh, Racing do own half of British media, if not all of it. And I want to talk about this. No, I want to talk about this, actually. Can, I, can we talk about this? Because... <laughs> No. Right. Why talk about it? Why are we going to Christian Horner every five minutes? Every, every five every minutes. Every race. Every race. We're going to Christian Horner every five minutes. And then I'm watching Ted's I'm watching Ted's notebook. I love Ted's notebook, yeah. 
fucking bastion of Sky Sports. He's there, he's talking to Red Bull, he's like, oh, are we getting on the same flight later? So you're telling me that not only are we going to the team principal every five minutes, you guys are sitting on the same flight back and forth from these places. Like, I just, I just want some objective broadcasting. We have I just a sit- feel like, awful. I just feel like, you know, on the job description of Sky F1, if you yeah. were to apply for a job, like the benefits are like obviously free healthcare, yeah, water, walk to like a cycle ski. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah. Maybe and healthcare. You're, you're all yeah, healthcare, but you're also added to like the group chat with yeah. with Horner. <laughs> you might even you might even get the horse racing with yeah, uh, Jerry. Jerry. Yeah, yeah, I love you that. You get to fly on the plane, yeah, and you get to talk shit on Twitter <laughs> and get away with it. <laughs> But I'm not letting you do that anymore. Obviously, <laughs> we're not letting you do that. But it's enough. Yeah, these are, these it's are enough. Apparently, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Vincenzo, we've had a we've had a weekend where, and I'm we're gonna I'll give you this. I know you've got to go in a second. No, we're good. We, we've got yeah, uh, yeah. So like, I don't know. So you work in. Uh, F1 media production, not like official, like, but you have, you know, you work in media production and you make content, you know, around F1. So you know how, you know, we all make, we all make content and we all, we all kind of, we all know how things are made, right? We have a weekend which has a lot of narratives, right? Red Bull have got their first one to, um, for for a while, I think 2016. I, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if that's correct. I, I feel like it's not correct. That may be a different stat. But they've had their first one too for a long time. Um, Max got a grand slam. Um, who else? What happened? Uh, obviously, Aston Martin have got both points. Uh, George Russell's in fourth. Uh, well, you know all, all these things. Ferrari, obviously, Ferrari issues. But Sky's insistence on focusing on, yeah. I guess, Max lapping. I, I hated that. I hated that. And I, I did see some, and the reason I mentioned this, I did see some tweets I, from you on this. So I did just want to I get, hated that. Like. I, I hated it because, not because it's, it isn't, you know. Yes, it's interesting. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Look at you. You're eight time, world, seven time world champion and you. <laughs> I like I get it. I, I truly do. Um but when it's very well documented that the car is just so bad. Yeah. Uh, well, and yeah. I guess that's and I think that's where what I just said is probably it. The car is not as bad if Russell keeps putting it up there in the top five, right? That's yeah. kind of the that's the thought process. But I think the focus is has become so clear that it is it goes two ways i know i'm trying i'm not really finishing my thought because I, a couple of things keep popping in my mind the focus has been clear that it's verstappen versus hamilton it's yeah. almost as if a verstappen Leclerc battle doesn't do enough for them yeah and we see this mm-hmm. in other sports here in the united states <laughs> um, the national football championships for ncaa when the small small teams happen to crack the top five or six and there's this conversation where well how come this you know this team should be allowed to fight the big the big dogs and it almost seems as if the ncaa does everything in their power to make sure it's always some of the the top four markets or the top four teams because they know that if you get to a championship and you have some team from nowhere yeah it's good as a story it's a great story but, but they can't capitalize they can't on it mar- They can't market it, right? They can market it, but they can't capitalize enough yeah. financially because the market's not a big enough, whatever it might be, yeah. right? And it, so that's almost what it feels like with Charles, where it's like, wow, you know what? We've got to do everything we can to continue down uh, uh, building up this narrative. So, you ha- you know, I think they showed a graphic like plus 77 seconds. Yeah. Is that really – like to me, it wasn't necessary. I, because, I, how many times do you see that? Like, I get it if I can't remember seeing that. I, I've ever. never seen anything like that. I've never seen anything like that ever. It was and bullshit. I didn't look out for the graphics, it was bullshit. <laughs> it was gender. It was what, so huh? legenda. Legenda. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I don't, so I don't like that's the that's where I that's where I disagree with a lot of like Team Lewis Hamilton and, and Team Max. Or I, I don't, 
I don't believe there's this agenda because I want to believe in the sport. It's like right. people that believe sports are fixed. I'm like, I can't believe that because the minute I believe a sport, and it does, I don't not talk about Formula One. Let's talk about anything uh, football, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soccer, which yeah. we know has been fixed. <laughs> the minute you believe that, you'll never really accept an outcome ever. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In, and so, like for me, I have a hard time just because it would ruin everything for me. I would, I would not be able to watch it if I if I allowed myself to accept that. Right? But I think Vincenzo, I'm not saying darling, you're not. Vincenzo, uh, darling, <laughs> you walked into the most. No. <laughs> I'm gonna say Vincenzo. <laughs> Vincenzo, wait, darling. Sorry, sorry to wake you up from your from your dreams. I really hate to be that gal. However, I, darling, I, I, <laughs> Vincenzo. I don't know. I'd like to point you towards a uh, small incident in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, small incident. I was the first. Tiny. No, I I was the first one. I was probably the first person, at least in my on yeah. my Twitter feed. I was I tweeted right away. I do not have a dog in this fight, but Lewis Hamilton was screwed. And you can go back and see that tweet. Oh, no. It got me so much hate. It got right. me so much love. It, well, I, it will do I, that. I truly I, I do believe he got screwed. One hundred percent. Um, yes, the rise agenda, was the agenda. born of George Russell. Rise. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you know what it is, Vincenzo. All I'd say is, look, you're. I think Ferrari fans are experiencing not in the same way because they will never be the same. But I think they're no, exactly. Yeah, but they're experiencing. I think what I think everyone other than Verstappen fans are kind of realizing, or maybe it only happens when your drivers directly with Verstappen this kid is being marketed as this yes greater yes. than you know he is the messiah like he yeah. is he, to say that. like he is the fucking messiah and yeah. like he's he's dethroned Lewis and it was yeah. good when Charles was when they had those back-to-backs and you know Charles was doing incredible racing and probably now we know extracting more from that car than was put like or he was getting the maximum out of that car versus maybe the red bull were underperforming you know he was doing we've got three minutes sorry apologies um but we uh i think that it's just essentially you know they're diminishing charles because charles um charles is essentially uh not as marketable in their eyes as max and you know i i don't think that's necessarily true but that's i guess that is what uh, it is. i i, I, I do though like they are marketing him as jesus when he's king herod do you know what i mean for those who are you love wow. the you love the biblical Whip it open, though. I love the, <laughs> the new take taking out the the new testament there yeah i, I like there it um, there you go look yeah uh Vincenzo. it is it is go ahead go ahead i was gonna say no no after you i i i don't want to necessarily go all the way down this topic because then it takes away from everything else we're trying to talk about but i do find it odd to read into that how you wish Tandy. yes <laughs> uh, i do find it odd that you know one driver wins a race and it's like plastered everywhere another driver wins a race and you see a couple posts and you're like okay and it's like all right uh Shouldn't every single winner, race winner, be like, you know, uh, uh, you know, shined on equally? Like, so it, it. I don't. I try not to read into those things as much, but it's very difficult not to. And then it's very difficult not to read into things like, why didn't they turn on DRS once everyone went to slicks? And selfishly, Charles was battling hey. you know, Sergio. Like, how come they didn't turn it on? Same thing with Lewis. He kind of got stuck behind this DRS train afterwards when he had opportunities. To oh, are we doing conspiracies? Okay, you know what? No, no, no. I don't want to be conspiracy <laughs> no, guys. We're not going to be I conspiracy. It, we're not going to be conspiracy. It's, just, it's but ironic it's... that it sometimes it seems to work. In okay. Certain... Also, like over and over. Like you know, I can say that. Look, at this point, this is a great opportunity for me to say, if you Roll are listening, the if you are listening to this podcast. Give us a uh, five-star review on Spotify. Give us a review on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. I am now going to insert an advert from our lovely partners in this point, and we'll see you after this break. Let's get into it. Right. So, Vincenzo, we're going to do it real quick because I know you've got to go. Um, who was your 
donkey of the day. <laughs> nah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Leclerc. Mr. Leclerc. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. I like I said, I can't. I just can't give him a pass for for that for the error. It was just too. It was just too unforced. I, I you know, Carlos gets a hard pass because he didn't. It wasn't his fault. Yeah. I truly, I don't believe it was his fault. Uh, I, I would, I would, in my heat, if you had asked me this right after the race, I would have said Ricardo because I was so okay. upset. Yeah. Happened. But after the fact, you know, he went to apologize. Like yeah. all these, I mean, he didn't. It is in those conditions, like you can't really. I'm, you, you, we forget sometimes that these gentlemen are under such immense pressure when yeah. they're racing. And it's at the finest of, of oh, millimeters oh, mate. make a difference. The margins are so fine. So, and he, you know, Ricardo got on a wet curb and, you know, and the thing is, yeah. I think the thing, I was listening to another podcast today and they made a good point that both Carlos and Ricardo said that they were trying to give each other space. And because they're both trying to give each other space, probably, ended up like, yeah, like Ricardo put a wheel on the curb and, you know, and if they were closer together, that they would have probably gone through. And, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I hear that. So I, I have to, I have to go with Charles. I just, he, he just had an opportunity to at least prove that he's ready for this championship fight. And I think that he got aggressive at the, aggressive in the wrong ways at the wrong time. Just, just, and maybe the car setup wasn't there. Maybe he didn't have it, but that mistake just, I I can't, it's so hard to give him a pass on it. No, look, sometimes look, I might have to get into someone today I don't want to get into, but it, it happens. It does happen. And look, quickly, your star of the day. I have two. I think it's a tie because I okay. think I think Checo yeah. did a very underrated drive. He didn't put a foot wrong. He plays second fiddle very well. Yeah. He is almost almost I I think he's probably the perfect second yeah driver he's never going to complain that he's second and he is he'll win you a couple races but he's never going to press kind of those yeah. team orders but he did very very well um and i would say george russell would, would i thought he put i thought he also handled a lot of the you know right from the beginning he pushed himself up there and he had i mean it was a very underrated because you never you never saw him on the broadcast. I don't I don't remember seeing him. No, we, we didn't. No, after his battle with Magnuson, pretty much um, yeah. that was you know that was it for George. And then when Bottas was closing in, but then they they pitted Bottas. I, so. I thought I thought I thought Bottas had a great drive uh, as well. But I would say my my two my star it, 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 between Checo and George, I, th- I thought they they both did very very. I, I, Lando just kind of got I gifted the podium in my opinion. I I just. Look, I genuinely just can't get on Lando's team. Look, uh, I know someone in this chat is upset about that, but that's that's on them. I'm not gonna lie. That's that that is on them. Tandy Savanda, don't look at me. I retweeted. <laughs> I retweeted the Lando Norris oh, this no, morning. No, this morning glory that was, run. That was but, so mean. That was why? So, so Why? I logged on to the app and I'm thinking, oh, what has Twitter got for me there? I'm seeing. Oh, what? That was he deserves so... it. Don't go on this me. morning celebrating your third place. And then ESPN are saying, is he the greatest British driver? Look, we could talk about this that, on our own. Uh, that, that one got, that set me. That uh, when I saw okay, that uh, Look, and that's why ES- I do. You know, like, ESPN. It's you know what? Like, I, I'm no fans, Vincenzo. I know you're hardcore from, I mean, from, That's okay. That's fine. Um, but I do feel like ESPN... Yeah, you guys need some seasoned Formula One fans in your team because some of the takes, some of the opinions it's giving. I, I don't. I mean, much. I hate. Yeah, I can't stand the ESPN F1 account. So I, I, I don't like ESPN in general. To begin with, I don't, ESPN was was good when I was a kid, twenty five mm-hmm. years ago. It it mm-hmm. is it sucks now. I, I I don't turn it on unless I have to. Yeah. But I have see, F1 TV, so I don't have to watch ESPN. But see, but... I have to give ESPN a chance or any other broadcaster apart from Sky. I've been searching high and low. Does anybody else have? But ESPN just, get, ESPN just takes Sky. I don't know if you guys know that, but they, it's just yeah. the Sky broadcast. Yeah. yeah. So the broadcast we get is, is if I was to watch on 
cable television is mm-hmm. simply sky. sky. Yeah. And it's, you know, we, we get like that about a half an hour before the race, sometimes right after the podium. And that's about it. Some interviews, but yeah, yeah that, I mean, there, when I saw that, I'm like, Lando Norris, the, I mean, you've got George Russell, who's clearly ahead of him by, by a mile. So Lewis Hamilton, like, uh, of course, I mean, obviously I meant yeah, aside no, from like, Lewis, like yeah. you've got George who's ahead of him by a mile. And then you've got a seven time world champion and you're asking if he's the great, I mean, he's literally won nothing ever. <laughs> in formula one and and you're whatever it's it, great. like i don't like i don't like those types of accounts because they're clearly clickbait and i know so espn for a while you know they were doing sports news like everybody else they ended up they had done this for their sports center account on instagram i believe where they hired someone from like house of highlights the, the gentleman who started house of highlights right. omar whatever his name is um to run it and it turned into this very like it turned into an account that people loved because they liked what omar was doing at house highlights fine whatever yeah because it's like tapping into this instagram culture of you know um of, uh, of of you know curating content that people like not necessarily always sports not necessarily always relevant stuff but always very like clickbaity and then i feel like they're doing the same thing with their I, the F1 account, yeah. it's like very clickbaity. I, I think that they, honest <laughs> to God, I think they had someone before. Okay, look, I think whatever they were doing before was basically stealing content, and then that didn't work. So now mm. they just take bait tweets. They pretty much do that now. Yeah, put them on a picture, yeah. and now they just credit whatever they're, they're stealing and say thoughts. And it is like... That is like the oldest trick in the Twitter book. They put a graphic, they put a nice graphic yeah. together because they've got the money, you know, the, yeah. the ability to do that. And they, they've got, you know, whatever, hundreds of thousands of followers because they're ESPN yeah. and they're really the only game in town here in the US. And, and listen, I'm not knocking what they're doing. I just don't like how they're doing it. It's I mean, not there's times where I felt like they stole my stuff. Uh, like, wow. within yeah. minutes of me posting something, they would post. And I'm, I'm and I know that I took it from somewhere else and kind of reworked it and made it hey, fit the way I talk. But, but you're an independent. Like, something original. Yeah, exactly. Correct. You're an independent con- content creator, and they're mm-hmm. not. Right. And when you're not an independent content creator, you have higher standards. But look, okay. anyway, I don't want to keep you because I know. No, 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 no. We're... Yeah, yeah. What else you got? Let's go. Well, that's good. I, okay, I'll cool. Think... Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. You know what? <laughs> Just give me like a you know, give me a little signal when you're ready. Uh, Tandy. You're right. You right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Donkey of the day. I can't believe you know what, yeah? This is how you know, yeah. Everyone thinks that it's me that's got hate in their heart. Yeah. I did. <laughs> You're the one who said let's start with donkeys. You said that. Normally we start with stars, but you want to get into something. So let's get into it. Your right. your donkey of the day. Go. I wanna start my donkey of the day is whoever named Max Verstappen sportsman of the fucking year last. <laughs> That was ages yeah. ago. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Why have I only just found out this? Sportsman of the Year, small rank coming. Small, uh, Sports- the laureus. Uh, Lewis won it in 2020, by the way, as an FYI. So, of course. So, so, so no, I'm just saying that's that's the standard. So, that's where I'm they, totally- that's okay. where it went. No, I'm saying that's what they, that's what they deemed it to be. Lewis Hamilton, social activist, you know, Great guy, beautiful gowns, mm. and then you know Thief. the next the next year, thief break checker. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Nasty pasty. Yeah, keep going. Nasty pasty. Possible yeah. daddy issues. Uh, uh, well, you know that's not uh, his no fault. comment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was shocker's delight for me. Yeah, that got me out of my hunger hangover. Bloody okay. hell. Okay, so you just found out about this on Sunday. Well, a jewel Am I looking out for Max Verstappen news? No, I'm not. No, no, you're not. Okay. No, fair play. Unless Probably. it comes hitting, hitting me. You, you know the people who you are who constantly like to tweet me things that you know are going to piss me off. I it's had to me. block some people, Tandy. Mm-hmm. There was someone, yeah, who, mm-hmm. who, who DM'd <laughs> us, who DM'd us saying, I'm following you to tweet you every time Lewis Hamilton doesn't do well. And you know what, yeah, I was like, I'm going to ignore that one because I'm like, I'm not going to get into that. 
And then, like, this weekend, <laughs> they're just peppering us. And I was like, you know what? I've got to block it. That's like, so, I like, do I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's extremely jobless, obviously. 100%. But it's, it's quite, like, you're a big loser. Big loser. And honestly, like... As I always say, I wouldn't be paying the amount of rent I pay for this London place that I live in if I knew I lived in your head rent free. It would have made a whole lot of difference to me. Me, my lamp, <laughs> my 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 laptop. We'd have moved in. Yeah. But now that I know, let me know when the lease starts. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, that was my donkey moment. But okay. again, I definitely agree, Charles. I don't want to call it recklessness. Let's not call it recklessness. I think yeah. it's naivety. It's like a, it's a like so. This is a mix and bowl right now. So it's like a mixture of being naive, yeah, being that mentality of like getting a bit too big for your boots slightly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, underestimating a lot of things um just being what we call in the uk vincenzo getting a bit gassed it's gassed <laughs> head's gone <laughs> and then you're yeah. driving and you're, i'm just gonna make and that yeah. care i just thought just don't do it i knew I, he was gonna do it before he did it i knew he was gonna do I, it you know i said the same thing they went to that onboard camera and i said i don't want to see this onboard i don't show me I don't this onboard. they went on the live broadcast they went to the out i'm like don't don't do it don't do it of course he turned, uh, i don't know if it's i, I agree I, I would agree with almost everything i don't know if he's got like the big head where he's suddenly thinks he's bigger than i don't think I, that i, I think it, the big head i think the moment he got in gassed the moment. in the moment yeah it's oh, like okay. yeah 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 you yeah. feel like you yeah you're on top of your mm -hmm. your hey it's the last 10 laps like nothing's gonna go wrong now yeah yeah I, I, I just think, too, you're fighting with a team who is very willing to do whatever it takes to get their number one driver to win races or finish ahead of you. So they've always got that second driver that is, especially in a moment like this week where you we didn't have a second driver to fight Carlos's DNF, you have to be extra cautious. That That mentality of, I'm going to attack this as if the two guys in front are nobodies mm -hmm. is, is kind of, you know, and Checo's quick, Checo's quick. You know, you've got, you're, you're really fighting both of those Red Bulls. You're not fighting just one. As long as they're reliable, they're probably going to be faster than you every, every race. At, at least that's how I, unless something, they, they have some upgrade waiting that's going to make them suddenly faster, you know, much faster. So I, I think naivete is probably the, the, better word yeah. for it I, I, I there's some there's something there that's like that you almost can't put a word to that's yeah. missing from but but that like that ice cold like ice in my veins killer attitude like that's what i feel is missing and and mm -hmm. I, I will say i think max does a very good job of that blocking out has that ice in his veins whether it it is you know, diving into a corner and he'll do it again. You know, he just, cause he doesn't, does it, it's like, it doesn't affect. For sure. But also I think that's experience as well. Like Max is, I think people forget Max is a lot more uh, F1 experience, experience right? yeah. than, than Charles. Yeah. So, yes. um, and Max has been indulged in F1 a lot longer than Charles. So yes. Um, yes. that will inform someone's yes. opinion on their abilities and, and how they can go about their work. Um, mm -hmm. Fuck it. While you're here, let's just fucking do it. I am done. I'm done. We just want to fucking do it. We're doing Doki fuck. today. I can't. We can't. Uh, do we Doki never, guys. We never have a script. So when he goes, fuck it. I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm fucking. I'm, 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 I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I can't do it. I, I can't do it. Don't you know tell what? me your donkey of the day is going to be Total Wolf. No, it's not. You know what, Vincenzo? It's not going to be Toyota Wolf. Okay. It's going to be the whole fucking organization. I'm like top to bottom. Come on. No, Vincenzo. Vincenzo. Down to the Vincenzo. cleaner. No. <laughs> Down to the woman Vincenzo. who makes a cup of teas. No, no, maybe not her. You're gonna I, I feel like you're going to throw the queen herself in this dog. Oh, look. Day. I'll throw the queen under the bus first. 
Okay, <laughs> down, down with the Republic. I'm telling you, well, no, Republic. I'm a Republican. Monarchy down. All I'm saying is, yeah, I mean, yeah. Vincenzo. Yeah, for a hundred percent. What I would say is, Vincenzo, the only thing is, right? Mercedes need to sort it out. And I'm not saying the design team and the aerodynamics and whatever, I'm giving them to Spain and the upgrade and whatever, right? Because they, you know, we are the 2022 data gathering champions right now. We, they've told us after every session, <laughs> hold your heads up. We've been gathering data. My head is high. I've seen the data. I'm swimming in it. I'm knee deep in it, Vincenzo. However, what I cannot abide right now. Yeah. These pit stops, yeah. And the strategy are not good enough. Okay, and we've said this, and the problem is from last year, we've been saying, Mercedes, you're too, look, when you, we talked about Max Verstappen, overindulgence mercedes when you've been too at the front yeah. for years and years and years you've had no one really challenging you. all you've had to do is inter team strategy james vows always had to do is worry about two cars they're both of the news team one of them he can give a bad strategy that's fine now we have an opportunity we're we're in 11th place or 10th place the track is drying we're in traffic. Like, there's an issue. Lewis doesn't trust the pit wall. And Lewis is driving decisions that the pit wall are making. They're asking him, do you want to come in? The track is drying. Lewis says, no, it's too slippery out here. A lap later, Vettel comes in. He starts doing vert purple sectors. All over. Was it Vettel? Uh, no, Ricardo, sorry. Comes Ricardo. in. Starts doing purple sectors. Everyone starts coming in. That could have been us. And that's the difference. Okay, we fucking we pit at the same time as everyone else, and then yeah. we have like a five second pit stop. If that pit stop isn't as long, look, obviously luck. Our, uh, you know, we have the situation. Oh, well, and then Ocon almost ran him off. The, of course, but like, almost like Italy last year. If Mercedes don't have a slow pit stop, Lewis doesn't come out right next to Max. He doesn't have a car on top of his head. Again, today, I know, I know, this is all a series of unfortunate events, but there's things that we can't control, there's things that we can control. We can control pit stops. The pit stops have been an issue for a long time right now, and it's not good enough, and I am not happy. I'm going to... I think... God yeah, God. after you. No, after you. I just, I... And I say this as, you know, a general sports fan who's... You know, I've been watching sports my whole life, and I get how these things are. I I think if I was a Mercedes fan, yes, I would be disappointed. Uh, obviously, we've you know eight eight world champions, uh, constructors champion. You know, you're sit. It, it's should be plug and play almost, right? Yeah. But at, at some point, things happen, right? Uh, um, teams like the New England Patriots, who have in American football have were a powerhouse throughout the 2000s. At some point, you know, little pieces, key pieces start to, to leave the team. And suddenly, you know, suddenly enough pieces have left to where things change enough. And now they aren't, you know, you're not dominant anymore. You're not able to just be at the top or yeah. assume that um, the, you know, victory is, is there. I, I think with, you know, Mercedes, you were you you know you guys were in this battle last season, and you've been fighting at the top for so long that the ability to to uh, work on these regulations ha was hampered. Clearly hampered. I would Go say ahead, I would say that, but Red Bull are the quickest team on the grid right now, and I they know. were they were there with us. So I would say I would so. It's not an excuse. I think they are, they are like, they're overachieving, oh, right? Okay. Expectations I, that they're overachieving on expectations because okay. the teams, because the teams that are, you know, Alpine's doing well, somewhat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Haas, Ferrari, you've got, you've got, they've shown a lot of, a lot more potential yeah. over what you've seen. 
And yet those none of those teams were really involved in, in the fight over the past couple of years. Yeah. I, I, I think that Mercedes itself, it's just such a big organization. They've lost, they lost pieces to Red yeah. Bull. They lost pieces to act like things happen. You don't know how important those, you know, it, it's a team. It's still a team. Yes. You have drivers that are the ones that get the glory, but it, it's, it's a, it's a team. So every little thing compounds itself. And it almost feels like when you're down, everything just goes wrong. Right. Yeah. It's not one thing. It's never just one thing. Cause if it was one thing, I would say go off. I'd say go off. Yeah. I'd mute myself and I would tell you to go off. <laughs> it's not just one thing. It's it's a it's it's this little thing. It's this little thing. Mm. It's this little thing. It and and they just they compound. So here we are four weeks into the season, four races into the season, and all of these things have just continued to compound themselves. Let's just say the side the no pod thing where I'm just gonna pick one on one thing. Let's say yeah. that worked and they they came out of the gate and they absolute rocket again because of that. We'd be, we'd be sitting here saying they're geniuses. Everyone. Wow. They, they beat us all again. They took a risk. They had less time in the tunnel, less testing, right? They, they, yeah. We know that the regulations are set up to, to do that, to try to help the field flatten. Yeah. How do you, you know, I, I hate to just pile on to Mercedes because I think it might be the you know easy thing to do. And again, as someone who's not a Mercedes fan, I can understand your frustration because I yeah. felt that way for, for years. And I, listen, I still feel that way, even though we're at the top. <laughs> like, I'm, still, I'm still feeling that way. I think that it's, it is one of those things where it's okay every once in a while to have a season where you're like, this is a season with a lot of discovery. You've got a new driver on it who's doing well. He's yeah. exceeding expectations right now, I would, yeah, I would sure. say. Yeah, 100%. It's just so jarring because Lewis is such a good driver that they're not able to provide a, a car that he's able to either figure out or it just sucks. It's a tractor. I don't know. I don't know what the actual problem is, but I was, you know, I just, I don't like people getting so down on their team after so many years of dominance where it's like, you know what? You're allowed this. It's okay. <laughs> Tandy. Which I know doesn't make it any better. Tandy, are we allowed this? Is like it okay? It's okay. I just feel like Vincenzo is the perfect person to be talking to us about this matter, mm. having been a Ferrari fan and having probably kept going even when everyone was clowning them, including myself, <laughs> and saying stuff like, you know, let's see you guys next year. So I, I think that speech was absolutely perfect and saying, you know, when these times come, it could be this, it could be that. It's hard to see. And you never know, like, we might have our comeback next year. We might have it in a few years to come. But, Vincenzo, you've been down for the cause either way, haven't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, look, and, and, uh, and look, and that's something. Uh, we... Dude, did you cut out? Wait, did you? No, no, well, we I just... think she cut out. I didn't hear everything. Oh, we just asked like you've been down for the yeah. cause with Ferrari, no matter what. Like you, no matter what, you've always oh, been yeah. Ferrari. No matter what, yeah, of course. Um... And of course, and, and we all get listen. We, we all get down on our teams. I've, I've been mm -hmm. down. I, I listen. I, I'll be the first one to say I wanted Binotto gone. You okay. know, three, four years, three years back, I was like, this okay. dude. You know, strategy's not working. Yeah, but that's also a lot of years of failure, mm -hmm. not succeeding. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. just. One year after a dominant, you know, so I would, I don't like to give passes. I don't, I don't necessarily no, think sure. that's like, the, but, like, but some I people think have like has credit. earned himself yeah. one. He's got credit in the bank per se. Uh, that's quite, that's quite a bit of credit in the bank. You know, you've yeah. taken the team in, in the past decade, you've taken this team to what? Third, third ever yeah. in, in construct, right? Who are you, who are you behind? McLaren? Um, uh, it went in terms of constructors, <laughs> probably, just constructors, uh, yeah, probably like what McLaren and I don't know, not Ferrari, no, Ferrari? Ferrari's one, yeah, Ferrari, one, yeah, Ferrari, one, yeah, one yeah, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, probably McLaren. I was, I was like, maybe Williams, I think it's but, Williams but, uh, but so you're, so yeah. I'm saying you've taken this team from like zero success to success, yeah, it, mm -hmm. you know. It, it's like at some point that's a sustained period of time. That's a long time. Okay, that's a lot of championships. Like it's that's even hard to equate in any sport. That it's a very hard down. It's like pills to swallow for the Asher. I can see it. Uh, look, look, don't worry. I 
you know what it is yeah you know what it is we have a limited amount of time with lewis left and let's be real vincenzo some of us are mercedes fans by default if lewis was driving a horse and a horse that had all the success that they had i would be a horse fan. Yep. i am an i'm a mercedes fan by default i support okay. the team because they've given lewis the car to to do what's that needs to be done so that's why you feel the way you do that's 100%. why you, so i'll they, tell you this right now that's why you feel the way you do oh 100 because you're not really a mercedes fan and that's okay yeah no and that's and that's fine i support the team but i don't support the team like the, the team are a facilitator for Lewis, exactly for you me. want the team right. to consistently provide your man your yeah. driver 100%. the best vehicle for him Experience. to yeah. right yeah. That's, and that and that's actually the biggest difference between the way you and I feel, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. You are about the team, teams. the team above team everything, above everything, and I am the driver above everything. And and that's the and great that's thing fine. about Formula One, I think. And I think that's that's something that I in football I'm the opposite. I'm Arsenal above everything, but in F1 I'm I'm you yeah. Know, driver, but, um, yeah. Uh, well, you know. We don't worry about that. So um, we we literally doing. Really I well. watch Italian. I watch Italian football. We lose everything all the time. Well, in club football, don't right? say that. In club you, football, club football. I was going to say you literally football. broke all football. of our hearts this summer. Yeah, <laughs> as well, yeah. well deserved. <laughs> it was coming home. You all deserved it. You all deserved it. It was coming home. It was home. It come. Home. I was in the pub. I was oh ready. I painted my oh face. God. We were literally like, this I is going to be the my best face. day of our lives. Tanya had a face painted. <laughs> I had the boys round. Oh, Saka. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. anyway, quickly, your star um, today, Vincenzo. My what? Your star, star? today. Yeah. I th- we did this already, didn't we? Uh, did we do that? I don't think we did. I did it. George Russell and Checo. I said. Okay, George you did George Russell and Checo. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, she did say that. Tandy? And I stand by it. I stand by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it either the same? Uh, pardon? No, I'm George. Um, you know what? Hear me out. 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 Okay. Hear me. Vincenzo, this no, you don't understand, Vincenzo. This hear me out. Hear me out. Let her speak. You're such a turncoat. Please, Tandy. Why am I a turncoat? Please, right? You no, know what? Don't like, let me get the past guys. episodes out. <laughs> Kevin's P4 finish is Haas's best ever qualifying. Oh, ever. okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah and good. I think it's something that we need. To, I think it's something <laughs> that we need to just give small, you know, oh, like, that was well, nice, that, lads. That was good. That was nice. Incredible. Like, we don't have to be nasty and get on Twitter and be nasty to Lando Norris, who, by the way, is my second driver of the day. And he's my, I mean, he's my, he's my, um, star of the day and and we don't have to be those people nyasha <laughs> do you know what i mean like wow. sometimes give accolades oh, right, yeah? you to give so this is not me turning around and saying all of a sudden i'm gonna this is not me saying all of a sudden i'm gonna start wearing has match wearing drinking has mugs and right. snapping fingers with kevin magnuson right this is okay. me saying well done Kev. acknowledge it that's quite nice for the team Look okay lovely to see because my my driver was finished what was in 14th last time i was watching do you know what i mean who am i who am i to come here and act like a woman who has something in her in her basket when <laughs> others have other things in their basket so uh yeah shout out kev um lando lando norris okay can you hear me I can, yeah, 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 keep going, keep going. No, no, this has been beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So, Lando Norris, Lando Norris. um, Would you guys ever trust Lando Norris with your birth certificate? I wouldn't trust Lando Norris with anything. I wouldn't trust Lando Norris with, are you fucking, what? Lando, the guy that carries a backpack around everywhere. Why would I? Trust I'm asking you, would you trust him with your birth certificate? Yes no, or no? No, 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 I wouldn't. No. And that's exactly <laughs> how that little mouse got third place. 
yeah sometimes it's a game of being a mouse and just getting in there and do you know what i mean absolutely for it lad do you know what mm. i mean he said he said i do not want to be on the next episode of quick stop f1 with tandy grilling me and my entire team so i need to take one for the team right here and i'm going to be the mouse and i'm going to get my cheese and i'm here for it i love it you tricked me into that and i i fell for it i fell for it i fell for the bait um my drive for the day <laughs> was um i'm gonna go with yuki Tsunoda, uh 16th to 7th over the course of the weekend Fantastic. uh well done yuki um just he, I just I just love him. What a guy. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just love him. I love him and I think he did really well. And I think it's really important for him. And uh it's time for him to capitalize on all the potential that he has. Yes, Vincenzo. Um, off topic, can I ask a question? Oh yeah, yeah, go crazy. Did you hear the room like that there's rumors of a potential driver swap happening? Yeah, I did hear that, yeah. Okay. I want to know who you think this driver swap is. Like genuine, I love this kind of like gossip rumor stuff. Who do you think it is? Uh, can I be honest? No, I want you to lie to me. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think, uh, I, I don't know. I, I really can see potentially i don't see any driver like swaps i do see pieces coming in and out but if you had to tell me like two drivers that could like physically yeah, swap, swap i think maybe albin and gasly really that, that's 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 what i thought too i think it's albin and gasly yeah really i think album i think Albin's. i would over. like to put a little bit of... you have cut out we're gonna to go to you, Vincenzo. Where? Okay, go, Tandy. Oh, go, kidding. Tandy. You go. Cut out. You cut out. Give us what you were thinking. Can you see me now? Yeah, yeah. see you now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so I was gonna say a uh, Bottas and Ricardo swap, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I think if that happens, it's because Ricardo's uh, I'm pretend- sticking and I'm staying. <laughs> I, I don't. I hate that one because I think that Ricardo potentially could be done. I, he just doesn't, it doesn't seem like he has it or cares. Look, I, and I think, I think, yeah. I think I, I was just saying, I my think, thoughts on the swaps or any of those. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, no, the signal just cut out. The door. I don't want to edit all this out. But uh, what were you, uh, your theory on the swaps as well? Sorry. I think that the swap would involve one of Vettel, Alonso, Ricardo, one of those that are potentially either retiring or, or might lead the sport. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of contracts are up anyway. So, like, one of them and one of the, the younger drivers that's like an Albon. I, I think Albon might be the piece because he's driving that Williams really, really well. Yeah. I think the other one to look out for might be Magnussen. Only because he's doing a hell of a job, and he's proven. Yeah. I don't know. He's where? Where to though? Where to, Vincenzo? Okay. Could let's you see not, him in science not, yeah. swapping? <laughs> Wait, hold on. I, and and I don't believe it because I love Carlos, but best mm-hmm. the best shot the best shot Ferrari has had in years, right? To, to like actually win, like potentially win this championship, right? Now, granted, it's a whole long ways away. Magnuson is proving that he's able to, he, he's driving very quickly and he is like, he's doing really well defending over, like he's really driving the hell out of that car. Do you think that there's any potential where they're like, you know what, Carlos, you're just not getting it done. We need to make the swap. Even though we just signed you, do you think that they're like we need points? We need we need someone who's going to get us freaking points. Like, I feel like Carlos just embodies everything about Ferrari. He down does, to his but hair. can he handle? But can he? Yes, but can he handle? Clearly, being second fiddle to Charles, 
can he handle where now they are now fighting for podiums, not for fifth place. Like your drive really matters now every week. It, it, you need to get points because it's really going towards something, not a third place, fourth place finish. So I, I'm not, listen, total, I, total, <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. It's highly unlikely. I, I still think it's my first Albon for one of those other, others, yeah. but I just very way out there kind of thought like, what if it is, what if they are getting nervous? My other, well, my, my joke one was Gasly and Hamilton because Hamilton clearly can't get past the Alphatars. So he needs uh, well, you know what? And that is a good place to end <laughs> this podcast. And that is a way <laughs> we are going to finish. That's going to end that shit. <laughs> Bro, oh, but just, but just, that yeah. was a joke. Yeah, no. Was a joke. <laughs> uh, look, Vincenzo, thank you so much for coming on the show, bro. We really appreciate it. Where can people find you on social media? Just on Twitter, at Vincenzo Landino. I'm pretty responsive in my, my uh, mentions and, and wow. DMs and stuff like that. So that's that's the best place to find me. Look, you've been an excellent guest. Thank you so much. No, thank you for having me. This is fun. This, this is, is actually great. one of the more fun interactions I've had with with uh, uh f1 you. folks in the last couple of weeks because it's been toxic out there you guys are a lot of fun no well look we appreciate it. we just try to be fun we were taking you know we're, we're not too serious but look thank you so much bro much appreciated uh that's goodbye from tandy goodbye tandy goodbye from tandy yeah okay getting better at it and goodbye for me <laughs> we'll see you okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you um next week uh take care of yourself and the people you love have a lovely uh time follow the podcast goodbye <laughs> introduction and then i will uh so me and tanya will talk for like two or three minutes and then i'll i'll, I'll bring you in okay take your time yep, go for it wicked Welcome to the Quick Stop F1 podcast. My name is Nyasha and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. Joining me as ever is my very well behaved and very not dancing all over the screen host, Tandy Savanda. You're great. You've really subdued yourself. I like it. I had to put myself in like a straight jacket so I didn't yeah. do that. A little dance, even though I feel like you're the only one who's asked about me dancing, like everybody else just loves it. If you could show me someone who loves it, I will tell you. I will stop I will telling show you, you someone. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. someone. Okay, someone who's not thirsty. So, right. <laughs> so, uh, how did you find the race? First and foremost, did you? So, I ended up watching it today while I was ironing. Yeah, nice. I iron now. Okay, cool. And I thought, I can't lie to you. I thought it was extremely depressing. Yeah. Not great. I can't lie to you guys. Like, yeah, yeah, that did not bring a smile to my face. Look, it didn't bring a smile to my face. And you know what? When I asked our guests to come on, right, Mm -hmm. I thought I was like, these guys are doing so well that Mm -hmm. when this guy comes on, it's gonna be like a uh, like it's gonna be like a victory podcast for me. He's gonna be able to come on. He's gonna be able to tell us. All about how well yeah. Ferrari done at Imola. And right. actually, it might have turned out to be... It was more pain than Mercedes. But it doesn't matter. Because I'm really happy to say that we've got my favourite Ferrari fan, Vincenzo Landino, all the way from South Palm, South Beach, Florida, right? South Florida, South Florida. I'm in Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Uh, Palm, Beach. Palm, Palm Beach. Yeah. No, man, look, thank you for coming on. How are you? Area. Fantastic. I'm with you, Ed. Was that, a, was that a Jay-Z reference in the beginning? You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. Yes, oh. it was. Okay. Someone gets okay. it. Somebody gets it. Someone gets it. I was, it's like, only taking six episodes. I'm like, where have I heard that before? <laughs> is a v. Yep, okay. Um, oh my god we like you we like you we like you already like you already. i love song you i love song lyric lyrics and i like references to song lyrics so that was like i heard that before yeah no, if no. anyone doesn't actually know me and yasha are like jay-z stan accounts like yeah connoisseurs. yeah yeah i <laughs> nothing I, wrong with that no look look vincenzo one day on twitter i said that i'd take dinner with jay-z over 20 grand and it was the biggest flogging i've ever got <laughs> but i stand by it 
I stand by it. I just, I just want to meet him. Okay, I want to meet him, and I'll. I... He's a business man. He's a business. Man. <laughs> Why not? Want to handle my business, damn. <laughs> do you know <what> I mean? <laughs> oh, oh. Look, we could do this all day, but um, what I wanted to talk to you about, Vincenzo. Yeah. Um, a couple of things. One, so I guess like I don't want to assume anything about you. So what's like your What's your connection to Ferrari and Italy, I guess, is is what I would, because I, I know we've had little chats on Twitter about yep. pasta and Ferrari and like, I, I know that you're Italian, but I guess it'd be cool to for you to like, I guess, describe that for us and how that relates to, you're the first, I think you're the first, is it Tifoso? Yes, Tifosi yes. Is, is the plural. Yeah. But, I, you, but, the way you rolled your eyes there, yeah. now I'm like, I wish I hadn't bothered saying that. No, no, you're okay. You're okay. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm, okay, good. Tifoso, like, Tifoso, Tifosa is fan, right? Oh, a fan, okay. typically. And then Tifosi is fans. Oh. But uh, Ferrari, you know, like, they've got this, like, the, their army of fans is yeah. just called, they've been labeled the Tifosi. Oh. And that's, so that's why people are like, I'm a Tifosi, which is fine too. You know, I'm one of the fans. <laughs> yeah. Again, it all comes down to it's literally the word for typhus. Tifo oh. is the word for typhus. Typhus is a sickness where fever, <laughs> you know, like high fever. Yeah, yeah. And so, what do you, you know, when you're a fan of something, you're fevered, you are like over the top when you're that's how ferrari fans are right or any fan of any of any team we all are to be fair <laughs> whether it's football or or american football or or you know f1 you are fevered when you're a fan and so anyway that's the word for it but uh yes people so um me i mean i grew up i grew up watching them uh well i had an uncle who i have an uncle who is uh loves motorsport loves formula one we used to go to races uh, all the time, not Formula One races, but any races we could get, we could go to. Uh, I grew up in Connecticut outside okay. of New York. Yeah. Uh, I'm first generation Italian American. My parents, you know, moved from Italy and I just, it just runs in your, it's kind of part of your DNA. It's part of that, you know, when, when you watch a race like Imola or when you watch a Monza and you see, all the tifosi just going absolutely crazy. I mean, that's how we feel about our team, which yeah. is not different than other other fans, right? But it but is that's a how little bit different, right? Because I don't think any other team. I don't think it does. I don't think any other team has that national connection and pride, right? Right, that, that's, that Ferrari does. So yeah, Italians are far more pa- far more passionate in general right that's yeah i'm not i'm not telling i'm not telling Brits anything different that they don't know i have a lot of Brit- british friends and oh, look the I, way we communicate is very different no i just well, quite lo- it is because yeah. like you could be british but you won't be loyal to lewis hamilton as we all know yeah, but yeah, i feel yeah. like with the ferrari fans and you're italian it's like a rite of yeah. passage it's something that you just do as you grow up like it's natural to I, you guys yeah. i think and people ask like, oh, are, are you a Leclerc fan? Are you a science fan? No, I'm I'm truly a Ferrari fan. I don't, I don't care who's sitting in those seats. If it was Verstappen, if it was Hamilton in those seats, I would, you know, okay. it's the brand. It's the, it's the mark when you see the prancing horse, like that uh, brings up a lot of passion and pride for, for us, you know, whether you're walking down the street here in South Florida or whether you're in London or whether you're in, in in the streets of Italy and you yeah. see a, one go by, it's just like, oh, you, you smile, right? And I've said this on another podcast too, where someone asked me a similar question and it's like, yeah, I mean, it, that passion where the company started, it was formed out of that passion for racing. Yeah. So it to me, it's for, you know, for Formula One is synonymous with Ferrari. And, yeah. and unfortunately, like they haven't been good over the last decade or so and that's okay right it, we all ups and downs but they've been there forever and it's it's so synonymous with the sport somebody actually asked me the question that it, do i feel i was on a podcast made a couple of weeks ago and someone asked if i felt that the payments they receive for being <laughs> part of the sport yeah. the longest were, were justified and i said you know what i do and that's like if i step back and i really think about it i do because they 
if you talk to anybody who knows nothing about Formula One and you say Ferrari, they're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, the fast cars, red. Yeah, of course. Like they could, there's yeah. so much more they know yeah. about that brand than anything else. Yeah. You know, Red Bull. Oh, well, that's an energy drink. <laughs> well, look. Uh, well, Alpine. What's Alpine? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's just, yeah. Anyway. It, it is, look, we can, uh, uh, you know, as much as we I am a Hamilton fan first and foremost, and then I, by, wait, by wait, def- wait. whoa. You're a Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know, but I really like Lewis Hamilton. I'm a really? yeah, big fan, big fucking fan. Um, so for me, um, I get it because I, I like Lewis first and foremost, and you know after that, I do like Mercedes. But there's that that's that connection, but that connection that I have with Lewis, and I think the connection a lot of people have with Lewis is a, a lot different to the connection that people have with Ferrari and Ferrari have mm-hmm. been there since Lewis has been there for what 15 years Ferrari have been there for what 50 plus now so you know it, it really it doesn't compare as a brand we all know what Ferrari are and what they bring to the table so and they're truly global that's you know that, yeah. that's the, the the brand itself is truly global and it's it I would argue that it's bigger in other parts of the world uh, yeah. like in Asia you know uh, Singapore uh, the Middle East, yeah. Actually, here and right here in Palm Beach, yeah. One of the largest, if not the largest, Ferrari like gathering happens here. Oh, that's so nice. It, it's you know, I would say it it goes above a lot of. Um, it transcends is the word I was looking for. A lot of yeah. just racing or just you know a lot of money because it's just the amount of passion. Most owners of the cars are so passionate about them. It's not like you just buy one and, and you have it. It's yeah. you, you're buying it for a reason. Like there's yeah. anyway, I don't want to talk. No, no, that's fine. Right. Trust me. Let's talk about some what, racing. Once, once, look, once we get a bit of YouTube money, when I buy my Ferrari, I'm going to be like, Hey, our friend, Tommy, he's got a lot of, he's got a couple of nice cars. I'm going to be like my guy, that Ferrari is going to be all over my Instagram. Don't you worry. I'm going to exactly. be all, like, all the Ferrari meets. I can't wait, but, <laughs> um, look, we're here to talk about the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Um, yep. And let's. Yeah. <laughs> this is some real sad boy hour shit right yeah. now. <laughs> Very much giving less Emily, yeah, and Mel- Emily, yeah. Oh, wow. Did you, pra- did you practice? <laughs> <laughs> did. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) we we, um, let's talk about, I guess, um, you know, it sounds a bit weird, but I just want to get straight into, I guess, the result of the race, right? Because it's a big thing, I guess, Ferrari this season, uh, you know, a lot of times people say, look, we're Mercedes fans. I have heard my team principal say we're sacrificing a season to be better in the future. And you Likely, take them yeah. you take them for their word and then their car is twerking up and down pit straights. That's not the point. We'll discuss that later. But Ferrari and Bernardo have been very clear since well, I guess 2020. They've been very clear. We're focusing on next year. Then COVID happens. And obviously, I guess it gives everyone an extra year to, to sort out what they're going to do for 2022. But they've actually delivered, right? It, it would seem the most... Maybe. Maybe. Well, I guess it is a stark improvement from last year. And it's a stark improvement from 2020. And, for sure. And you have a driver in Charles Leclerc who is capable of fighting for race wins and competing for race wins i think you have another one as well but who is we can discuss carlos in a second yeah one thing we've always said about Charles leclerc is that he has the bozo gene in him and it would seem that whether it's inexperience whether it's over exuberance whether it's whatever it is there is a mistake in Charles Leclerc. This mistake felt probably the worst 
that he's done. I guess in your eyes, what's your assessment of Charles Leclerc's like, you know, and I, I, I'm sorry to go in, but I guess I just want to, because I, I think it's, I, I think, it, I think there's a discussion to be had around Charles because I personally, I'm really upset. There was a podcast that we did before the season started where we ranked the drivers underneath uh, Verstappen and Lewis. And there was like six drivers and I was insistent on putting Charles first. And I got well, a lot at the same time. I got a lot of pushback on that. That episode a... was possibly one of our most rudest and controversial. Oh, and okay. Look, for one, sure. The world said it can't come out. Yeah, look. We lost it. We lost, we lost it. it. Yeah. Some of some of some of some of you know some of the brand endorsements we've got now would not have happened if we if that episode had come out. If that had but, come out. But yeah. uh I, I really like Charles Scott. I think he's great. But also, I do think he's got mistaken him. As a Ferrari fan, and obviously he is, you know, he, the uh, the golden child of Ferrari, the future of Ferrari. Yeah. What's your assessment, I guess, of 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 Charles Leclerc's, I want to say weekend, but I guess that incident in particular. I'm sorry to bring it up so soon. <laughs> no, I, I, I listen, I, I, I'm a fan of the sport, and I've been yeah. watching it long enough to to know that stuff happens it's okay uh i was very adamant the minute i saw what was going i I looked at my wife and i said they really should not try to push for a second at this point i think there was 10 laps to go when he when he tried to when he pitted for for softs i said they're gonna go for softs well obviously we saw it on the the broadcast yeah and i shook my head immediately not that i know anything not that i you know of course of but course. i said i said they, they really shouldn't do this because he's going to fight for this extra point which i know is very valuable in the in the, the rate in you know the the overall world championship he's gonna fight for a point but knowing him he's gonna really push for second which he was he got close yeah. but i'm like he's gonna he's really gonna push for second and you know to gain, th- th- how I looked at it was this. Let's just say he did gain fastest lap and he did get second. That's a total gain of four points. But he ended up losing seven potential yeah. points. Yeah. So for me, uh, a minus three on the net scale isn't worth it. Like, it's yeah. not enough. Now, one could argue, and I did have this argument with someone else, well, three points in the grand scheme of things at the end of the season, four points at the end of the season, that that could be a, the differentiator. Yeah, maybe. But... Losing seven points. And I mean, he got very lucky that he saved that. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. He didn't save that. That's 15 points off the board or 12 points off the board, whatever. Yeah. Com- completely. Plus nothing from Carlos for a second week in a row. Now the, const- now the constructor, actually, Red Bull, I think, would have leaped them in the constructors. Yeah. So that, and not, and again, very, very early, right? There's for not sure. freaking out. But when I, for me, I, I sit there and say that's a very typical that's a very typical thing, right? For yeah. the team that I've been watching for the past ten years. That's what was infor- unfortunate for me. And knowing that Charles is a very good driver, I, I, I would rank him right up there behind Max. Yeah. Um, behind Lewis. Just just beneath them, right? I think he's that fast. I think he's that good he just still like you said he's kind of got that bozo gene you know the first thing i thought of i am stupid i am stupid the first thing i thought of and watching him bite that curb hard to try to to get an extra advantage at a point where you you're third it just take the third take the podium yeah don't don't give the for me the worst thing to do was give not only give red bull blood like that blood in the water mentality yeah oh, you know what we've got them or now now kind of seeing that you are i go back to uh what, what was it uh, you, you guys remember, did you watch iron man 2 i did yeah I can okay so in iron, iron man 2 when whiplash <laughs> on on the monaco on the monaco remember, trip, it right? gets a, yeah yeah it sounds and he and he fights iron man and then and then tony stark ends up talking to him and saying like but you didn't beat me or whatever. And he goes, yeah, but if you could make God bleed, 
Yeah. That's that's what matters, right? Now yeah. I'm not saying that Ferrari is God, but I'm saying like <laughs> if you could see a weakness, hey, it makes everyone else realize, okay, there we've got a better shot. Now you've given McLaren hopes because now Lando's got a little bit of yeah. oh look at this. I, I can finish third because yeah. they can make a mistake. We can we can force Leclerc into mistake. Like that's now the mentality of the other team. We can force him into a mistake. We know that Red Bull is going to prioritize Verstappen at all costs. Yeah. All costs. They, mm. So, you know what? Now they're going to use Sergio to force yeah. just con- force Leclerc into mistakes. So, I, I feel like it just it gave so much more ammunition for other teams to see them do that. They lost points where they didn't have to. He got very, very lucky to even save that. Yeah. You know, it – so yes, is he a good driver? I do. I think that there, there's still something missing. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's killer instinct. I think it's the ability. Max has a really good ability to block out a lot of noise, where he doesn't care really about anything, especially yeah. when he's racing. I think so. I've seen Tandy so. The thing I have always known about Charles is that he's a young driver. Yeah, and at the same time, he's a gamer. So I've always said that recklessness of him comes from just being able to restart. He doesn't, he's not so, he's a gamer in the sense that when you're gaming, and per, I don't know if you've ever played Formula One on <laughs> console, but like there's this ability to just kind of be reckless. Yeah. Without yeah. actually there being any consequences because you're gaming. So I have always Which had that. Is the same too. thing. Yeah. And yeah, I think so, Lando kind of has Lando has that same mentality too. Yes, I always say this. So there's this idea that like there's no consequences, and so they mm-hmm. kind of just go for it. And they're stupid mistakes. They're absolute stupid mistakes. But in their heads, yeah. it's like a rite of passage in a way. Like mm-hmm. let's just see how it how the outcome comes out. Yeah. And with per se Lewis. Carlos sometimes and the older drivers there is that sense of thinking should I do that let me just allow it let me let me let me settle for the position that I'm at and just accept that this is my position but the lads the younger ones they're just you know but I'll also say I I would say this too and not not to be cliche but to quote my favorite driver of all time Aaron Senna uh you know if you're not going for a gap you're not a racer anymore and so I'm not saying that was a gap he was going for, but that mentality of you're always pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, trying to get it. You know, we saw it, we saw it in, was it Australia where, where if you want to yeah. go for the fastest lap and you're like, you already have it. Like, you don't, that's that killer instinct. I wish he, he would show all the time. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. have that killer instinct. But for but, a long term goal. Correct. Go ahead. No, no, I was saying have the killer instinct, but have it for the world championship, not for right. that particular moment in time. Like you're yeah. you're in a 